you want to know that that I'm not addressing, uh, let me know. Uh, not that I necessarily have all of the answers for you, um, but I have seen a lot of the issues that are popping up around classroom and have dealt with them from different people. So I potentially will be able to get that uh, get that answer for you. And if not now, then I will definitely get it later. So, so let's uh, let's jump back in. Allison, if you want to test your mic, you just unmute. Yeah. Yay! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> She's back in. All right. So hopefully you guys are seeing my classroom here. These are the questions and and sort of the topics that I uh, I was able to find that that people were having questions with. I hope that you guys can see this okay. Uh, one was on using one assignment in multiple classrooms. Um, I have the the exact text down below so we can go through it. And so it kind of went together with this other, which was reusing assignments from other teachers. So if one teacher posts, how do we reuse that? Um, I thought that this one paired up really nicely with adjusting the notifications and how do you change the notifications that you're getting and from which classrooms? Um, making a copy for each student assignments and not getting created copies for each student uh, or not creating copies for each student. This was one that I've had a couple emails about, did some research on it and I found a quick, I don't think it's a fix, but it's a little workaround that will allow us to do that. One that pops up a few times is uh, the student deleted the assignment. What do I do? There was a question on recording audio and then there was a couple others in here. So, so we're gonna fire through these ones first and then if you guys have any questions, just please stop me at any point and we'll get to it. So, so here's question number one. Is there an easier, more efficient way to use the same assignment as another teacher in Google Classroom instead of copying and pasting the text and sharing their video with me? Another teacher and I both teach grade six math and post the same assignments to our students. I don't want to copy the links as this directs my students to his classroom and they are not a part of it. So obviously they get that error. I once tried to post an assignment I created to his classroom at the same time. I'm also a teacher in that classroom and it didn't work. So there's a couple workarounds with regards to this one. If we jump into one of the demo classes here, this one should be, uh, oh, there's lots of stuff in here. That's okay. We're going to create an assignment. It doesn't really matter which of these we create. All of the options are the same. So because it doesn't matter, let's simplify it here and let's create a material. So this is a test video. Again, it's, it's not that big of a deal. We're going to add a YouTube file. Something super simple because it was on videos. We'll say that video link was in there. Perfect. Everybody's favorite, Pharrell. Um, so up in the top corner here, there, there is some settings for differentiation. And so by this, we can differentiate to which students are receiving it. So if only specific students need to get this assignment or this material, we can assign it to only those students. So we can assign it to only the test teacher or the virtual teacher or whoever we need or everybody. But we also have the option to post it to multiple classes. So if I wanted to post this one to my demo class as well, we have the option to do that. Now, notice the option to do all students is removed. And so we don't have the ability to differentiate based on classroom and on the students that it's assigned to. So we have to do it one or the other. And then we have our topics that we can post under. Now, we're gonna pick one that I know is not, well, let's go down here, testing. I know that's not in the other classroom. I know it's in this classroom. And then we're gonna post it. So this is the easiest method to do that, is just to create it and post it in more than one. So I put that down under testing, and it was this one right here. This is a test video posted at 304. If I pop to my other classroom, we should see that it is also in there. Nicole, I'm just gonna mute your mic quick here. And it did actually create that topic in there. I didn't know if it would create that topic or not. So it created the topic in there for us, uh, but it allowed us to post it over there in multiple places at once. Now, if I change one, I'm gonna pop in here, we're gonna edit this, and I'm gonna remove that video. We should see
that it is only changed in that classroom and it's not changed in this one. So the two, it creates the two separate assignments and they work individually. So it allows you to sort of differentiate on that means by going to all those. And then once you get into that classroom, then that individual teacher can then go and work on that and separate it separately to work around. The other option that we have, if we go back to classroom and up to create, is to reuse a post. So if we're reusing it from another teacher, if we are a co-teacher in their classroom, we can go to reuse a post and we can go and grab that from them. So I'm gonna go into one that I have archived. I believe this one is, our, well, it says right there, archived. So we'll just jump into that one and grab it. It's archived, but it could be a class that I'm just a co-teacher in. And we'll just grab one of these and reuse it. Um, one thing to note, sorry, I went a little quick there. There's a checkbox on the bottom. I'm just going to grab that same one again. And notice it says create new copies of all attachments. What that will actually do is it'll actually go back into the My Drive and it'll look to, to see the original document if changes were made. So if you're anything like me, typos are horrendous in your documentation and stuff like that, or maybe you change a couple numbers or something was not quite right. So you update the original, you don't worry about updating all of the copies, you just tell the kids and we move on from there. Then the next time we go and reuse this, we post it out there and then forget that we had made those changes. Well, this right here by creating new copies, it goes and it looks for the original and it uses that one to make any changes. So if you made changes to the original, it will be updated in any copies that get assigned now. And then when we click reuse, it actually creates that draft template. So all we really need to do now, if we want, is just assign it. You don't have to do anything else, but it's giving you the opportunity to change any of the settings. So you can add additional attachments, you can change your description. If this was an assignment, you get the opportunity to change the due date, change the topic or remove the topic, all of those things are available to you now. So essentially, it's just shortcutting the creation process as opposed to copying and pasting and moving forward from there, so. And I think I can check the box on that one, I hope. If, if, that, if that individual's here, uh, I, I didn't gather names, I didn't want to. If that individual's here and, and I didn't answer that question, fire me a message, throw it in the chat window and we will uh, we'll address that for sure, so. Um, oh, and that reminds me. So as I pop back in there, that reminds me. So if you are co-teachers, again, I'll use, uh, well, I'll use Nicole as an example. They started out with a giant grade three class for all of them. And then they've since separated it into four smaller ones. I hope that's okay me saying that, Nicole. So they have their individual homerooms as opposed to everybody all in one because the notifications were getting a bit horrendous and working with there was getting a little bit difficult. So but maybe you still want to be a co-teacher in all of them so that when it's your turn to make the assignments, you can assign something and assign it to all the classes. And then maybe you're in charge of all the math. Then the, the teachers go in there and they differentiate on their own like we just showed you too. So one of the things to be aware of is the notifications. So anywhere within classroom, if you click on, I call this the hamburger menu, the three lines. If you click on the hamburger menu and come down to settings, it's gonna bring you to your notifications. And this is where you can start to dial in what you want to know about and don't want to know about. So for example, uh, we wanna receive email notifications, most likely, but maybe if you just want the pop-ups, you can just have the pop-ups, right? That are gonna come down in the bottom right corner. I'm gonna leave the emails on. Um, comments on your posts, if you allow comments for sure. Comments that mention you, again, likewise, and so on and so on. Now, this is where it gets cool. Do we want to be notified about late submissions? I would say yes. Resubmissions, I would say yes. Invitations to co-teach classes? Maybe, maybe not. You don't want, I mean, hopefully the person has talked to you before they just randomly invite you. And scheduled post publish or failed? I'm not really too concerned about that, so I'll turn that one off. If I pop down, and this is where we can get even more specific. If I pop down in class notifications, I can select which classes I want to be notified for. So if I, I am just a co-teacher in this, uh, well, let's say this 30-day Google Classroom Challenge one, if I was just a co-teacher and I don't really want to know when every single student comments or posts or does something, I'm just gonna turn off the notifications 100% for that one. And then I don't get anything 
the main teacher does, and uh, they can figure out. We're gonna turn that one off. It's probably coming back on because I'm the only teacher in there. But I wouldn't, or maybe I tap something. I wouldn't get anything. They would get everything, and and life would be good after that. So, so just a way to adjust it if you are a co-teacher and sharing uh, resources in that manner. And then when you're all done, just pop back to your classrooms, and everything's good. Everything is all saved in there. So. All right, this one we have no workaround for. Once scheduling an assignment, it will not allow you to change that each student gets a copy selection. I have to delete the assignment and make a new one. That's correct. There is no workaround for that. Um, what that means here, we're gonna pop back into my general and classwork. We're gonna create an assignment and give it whatever we want. We're gonna add from my Google Drive. Let's see what we got here, untitled presentation, perfect. And let's say at this point here, we forget to make the change. So we forget to click that drop down and say, make a copy for each student and we just post it like this. The minute we assign that, it is set, okay? It doesn't allow us to go, oops, I made a mistake, go back and edit. The only editing you can do is students can now edit the file. So it just changes that sharing permission. It doesn't allow us to go back and recreate it. Even if we delete that, we need to, sorry, we need to delete that and go back in and it's still not there. So what we actually need to do, we're gonna just eliminate the entire assignment we got to delete it all the way back to the beginning and then restart and recreate that one. So there isn't anything that we can do about that. That is a Google thing. I will say that if you're frustrated with any of these pieces from Google, you think Google should make that change. Down here in the bottom left-hand corner of Classroom, where the little question mark is, you can uh, submit feedback. So report issue or request feature. If you click on that, it's gonna pull up, uh, you, you wanna be on the screen that you're at, but it's gonna pull up feedback based on what you have. So we're not really gonna worry about a screenshot here. There's nothing important going on, but it's gonna pull up the feedback on that and it's gonna send it to them. Um, a lot of the additions that we see in Google Classroom is based on this feedback, according to what I hear. Now, I've submitted some feedback and it hasn't been addressed and I've also talked to people who have submitted feedback and it has been addressed. I think it becomes with how many people are submitting and how quickly it pops up on their ladder. It also probably has to do with, you know, what they can monetize in the business end of this. And also, uh, you know, some stuff is a little bit easier to do than others. So, so just so you know, you can submit that feedback. All right, so that one's true. Nothing I can do with that. It is true, you have to delete that assignment and then pop it back in. The best thing that you can do is just make sure you stop and check and uh, before you, you know, check before you assign and stuff like that. So instead of having 45 students in one Google Math classroom, I create two identical math classrooms. Now daily challenge I have is, is to set up two identical classrooms each day with posts and assignments and videos and materials. And I think it would have been easier to just have one classroom, even though 45 students would have been in it. I hope that question number one also addressed this. I think it was a similar question there where uh, we can just have those classrooms and assign it to more than one, so. Uh, is there a quick way to set up one classroom and duplicate it to quickly to another classroom? Yes, there is. So if we have a classroom from last year, Google Classroom is actually meant to be ended at the end of every year and start it again. Don't kick the kids out and then invite in new ones. End it at the end of the year, recreate a new classroom next year and bring the new kids into the new classroom. But if we've spent all the time setting up our topics, setting up our grading schemes, setting up all of that, uh, we want to make sure sometimes it's good to keep that. So I'm going to use uh, this one right here, my 30 day Google Classroom. If you click on, I call this one the hot dog menu just because it's three dots instead of three lines. It looks nothing like a hot dog. But if you click on here, there is the option to copy a classroom. If we copy a classroom, and it, it's it's super specific to us here, you know, what do you want to name it? Same as before. What's the section? Same as before. Subject, same. Room, same. 
But up here, it lets you know, create a new class with copied topics and cl classwork items. Rosters and announcements won't be created. So when you do this and you copy it, it's gonna pull everything from the classwork section, but nothing from the stream section. So the stream is where you can make your assignments and post all of that stuff. The classwork section is where you post all of your assignment, or sorry, make all of your announcements and have postings for any assignments you do. This classwork section is where all of the information about the assignments and everything goes in. So what this will do, it's just rolling through here. And this one doesn't actually have that much, but it's taken a bit of time. What it will do is it'll create, recreate everything that we have in there and it creates it in draft form. So now I can go and I can invite my students. Let's just refresh that page, see if we can speed it up. I can invite my students to that class. So everything is the same. We should see there are no people in here. So this is where I would invite. But inside of classwork, everything has been made as a draft. So in order for me to assign it, I still need to go in and assign it at the specific time that I want it to be done. So if day two right here, I wanted to get that one done, I'm gonna edit that question and I'm gonna make sure that it's in the right class. We only want it by default, it's trying to put it in both of them. We only want it in this one. Uh, if we wanna make it out of points or whatever, we can do that. Adjust the due date because if we're using an old class, we wanna update the due date, students, topic, and then we can ask that question and it will assign it. So um, I don't have any need to assign that, so I'm just gonna remove out. But essentially, it creates all of those assignments in there. If you look at the stream, this is where all of our announcements would be and also any indications that we've posted a new assignment material question, those would all be in here. That's all blank because our announcements are made to be for our classes. So it's a simple way to do that, pull it forward, and then if you actually want, after you've uh, done that, please don't all do it at the same time, but I can manually dump all your students in there. I go to Power School, I do an export of the email addresses, and then I can insert them into there. Or some of your, uh, some of your administrators who have taken the Little Sis uh, classroom and have been working with it can also do that. They can also drop the students into there, but I don't mind doing that if you don't want to invite them, so. Uh, and this one, I'm going to come back to this one because that one's for later. Okay, so ones that I said, assignments not created. So in some cases, I'm going to go to my demo class. And I have an assignment that's picked out for this one. It is the testing the plagiarism checker. Okay, so I'm going to go and view this assignment. And if you look here, all of these individuals, we'll just zoom in a little bit tighter here. All of these individuals we can see have an assignment created for them. And if I click on that, it's actually gonna pop up their assignment. So no big deal there, life is good, everybody is happy. They just haven't handed in, that's why it's missing. But if we look down at virtual teacher, virtual teacher is missing this assignment. There is no attachment there at all. Excuse me. And it could be for a variety of reasons. It could be because they deleted that assignment. It could be because it didn't create that assignment. Only you know. So you know if it was created and not deleted there um, or if it wasn't and it was put in there. So my first step, the first thing that I want to do on this is I want to go and check and make sure that if I assign this, it was created and assigned to them. So I'm going to click down here on their name where it says virtual teacher. And there's, I just want to make sure that it's assigned to them properly. Thanks, buddy. I want to make sure that it's assigned to them properly and that it wasn't, uh, wasn't just left out in the mix. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave them a private comment. I just put a period, enter in there, and send it. And what happens in some cases here is it just kind of shocks the system. And the system goes, oh, we forgot to make this assignment. And it will apply that assignment to them. I have virtual teacher open, so we can... We're gonna pop in and take a look at that one in just a second here. But sometimes that's enough to just shock it in. And let's go back and see. And now if you see, all of a sudden that document is created for that individual. 
okay? So apparently when we assigned it, something went wrong on the back end of the servers. It didn't create that copy for that student. It looks like it can't be done. Sometimes just by doing this, it creates that new copy and everything is good. If we go back to the instructions, I, you know what, I'm not uh, certainly, or I'm not 100% certain, Ahmed, um, why it would do that. I don't know if it's because the internet connection drops, because essentially all you're doing is sending a signal down to their servers. Their servers create the system. It's all in the back end. It's not doing back and forth work there. It's one signal down. And then once it's created, it sends that signal back to you. So it potentially could be because of that, but I'm not entirely sure. So we see now that assignment's created. So. Just gonna pop in here and see. I have I was having some internet issues and noticed that 18 of 22 students got their attachments. Uh, so that means four of the 22 maybe did. Potentially give this one a try and uh, and see if it works. So that's you know starting point for me is this one now. So the uh, and so let's fire over. I have. Perfect. This is my virtual teacher. And we should be able to see now the plagiarism checker assignment and it is there. So sometimes what happens and this one we shouldn't see so much right now. But if you assign assignment and then a student comes partway through the year so that, you know, you assign it on, let's say, June 1st and on June 2nd, the student joins your class. I don't bad choice of dates, but joins your class on June 2nd. Um, Sometimes it won't create that until the student goes in there and clicks on the assignment. They will see that assignment, they'll have to go into there and when they click on it, it will create the document for them. Sometimes that happens. I, I don't know if that was the case in this one or not. So, Okay, I wanna show you another one here and it was, oh no, that's my Pharrell. It was this one right here. This is the first. We're gonna view this assignment here. What I actually did as a student is I went in and deleted this attachment. So I could actually probably do it with this plagiarism one. So we just created this. As a student, I don't really want to do this assignment. So I'm just going to say it didn't create it. So if they click on that X, it deletes the attachment and doesn't reassign it. A file Jason Kwasney copied for you was removed. So it is gone. They've eliminated that. They've removed it from the assignment. It's still there. It's hanging out in the back room. We can go and find it. We can go and take a look at it. But sometimes kids do this. The simple thing to do for them is make a copy. If your students do this and they're, some of our students are good and they just did it by accident, if they click make a copy, it will create a brand new copy of that attachment based off the template for them. If they have done any work on it, that work will be lost in this new copy. They will only have the brand new thing, the template that you started one from. But if they just did it by accident before they started doing any work, this is a simple way for them to go and recapture that and make new, okay? But let's go take a look at where else we can find this. The other place we can find it is in our Google Drive. You guys have probably noticed up here the class drive folder. When you create any classrooms, it creates two things for you. A folder in your drive with every single assignment that you have ever assigned to that class and all the links to the student copies in there, okay? And it also creates a calendar for you where you start to you know, add those um, assignment due dates and whatnot. So if we click on the cat class drive, it's gonna bring us to our class drive. And we can start to drag in and find that one. So that one was called testing the plagiarism checker. So if we go down, these are every single one we have. Uh, testing the plagiarism checker. So we find the name of the assignment. Inside of here, we're going to see every single file that has been submitted. So here's our virtual teacher. And here's the new copy. If you notice, one was created at 319, and then this one was edited at 322. So I have both copies in here that I can go back and I can reshare out with that student. They are shared. We can see that, the sharing silhouettes in there. And we know that the owner 
is that virtual teacher. If we look under the owner column here, we got virtual teacher. So they still own that document. So you can let them know here it is, or you can grab that link so we could open up that document and we could share it back with them and say, hey, just email them that link. And then on their side, from a student point of view, they could go down to add or create and we could take that link that I just emailed or sent to them and we can just drop it in here. And what it's gonna do, I uh, couldn't add the link. I bet you it's because it's the same, I attached that same file. Uh, we will go and grab the older file. So let's grab this link, make sure we share the right one with them. we'll just get them and again we would send that link to them paste it in there and it's just going to take a minute and then bam their old file that we just sent to them that they accidentally deleted now becomes attached to that again so now they wouldn't lose any of their work they can continue to work on whichever one but remember the two files are not linked so if they work on one and then the next time they work on another and then it's it's going to be a mess so you might want them to go back in there and say okay move everything over to one and then, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and then uh, move everything over to one and then clear away the wet, the rest. And so it's an easy way to get that, but you'll have access always to all of their files in there. When they hand it in, so when you assign it, they are the owner, you get edit rights. When they turn it in, and we'll be able to see this in here, these documents right here from Kelvin were turned in. I am now the owner. And if we look at the sharing permissions inside of here, we'll actually see that, that Kelvin, who was the one that turned it in, only has viewing rights. So he can only view it, he can't make any changes on it. He can go into classroom and unsubmit it or pull it back, uh, in which case, you know, I would get, if I have the notification turned on, I would get notification about that. Um, but other than that, he just gets to view it. So that's part of the reason why at the end, one of the good things to do is to, you know, return the assignments to the students. So you mark them, you give them a mark or whatever it is, then you return it because then we talk about ownership. It's their work. They deserve to be ownership. We keep a copy in our drive unless they remove it from us or remove uh, the sharing permissions from us. All right. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Last one we have here. I want to make sure checked off that checked off deleted recording audio there was a question about how to record audio in the classroom there's a couple different extensions that you can use uh but the one right now that i'm gonna say i'm the biggest fan of is uh flipgrid and i know it's more than just audio flipgrid's a free one uh that you can assign uh different questions to your students and have them respond so this was one that I was working on from home. I'm going to create, we could create a new topic or a new question. Um, but what we can do down in here is we can share this directly to Google Classroom. Now for your students, all of your students have a student ID number inside of Flipgrid. If you're going to use it, we won't get big into Flipgrid here. Or you can print off a QR code that they can scan and get in really quickly. But to share it to Google Classroom, it's just a share too. So you're going to get the exact same features that you had before, which is pick your class. Uh, we'll do our general demo class. And what do we want? Do we want an assignment, question, announcement, or material? Well, we'll make it an assignment. And then we just keep building on there. So which students does it get assigned to? Does it get assigned to multiple classes? What's the grading? What topic does it go under? All of those pieces. And then inside of our classroom i believe i made one somewhere in here and i might not if i might have deleted it but it uh yeah it creates that link that they go into and they click in and then they're speaking it records video as well as audio but it's a super simple way i would say to just record that and if they don't want the video just tell them to you know put a piece of paper over there or hold their finger over there uh it's not a big deal and and it's simple to do in fact i have uh got about 100 of these these nice little microfiber cloths that you can get from every teacher's convention just throw that over doesn't really matter that it's a little bit uh 
bright to see through. We're still recording audio. It might be, we'd have to make sure we didn't record over the microphone up there, but easy. All right, so I'm jumping back in here. If a student deletes a part of the assignment in the doc, uh, how can you return the content without losing the new material that they added? Okay, what I would say in that case is, uh, okay. What I would say in that case is you copy what's new. They would, they would have to have some way of knowing what's going on, but then up in the last edit, this is your revision history. So when you click on that and the revision history of this is gonna be absolutely horrible. So let me go find a document that I know has much more revision history on. Um, don't know. Let's look at this one. I don't know that we would see too much revision history on this one either. But what we would see is we would see all of the different changes that were made. No, because I made a copy of this one. We would see all of the different changes that were made inside that list. And, uh, and then we could return back to one of the previous versions. So that previous version, jumps to the top. I do. I really want to find one here because this is important to me. Uh, implementing digital citizenship. Uh, I don't know how many changes I made there. Let's do, let's do this one here. We'll see a lot of changes in this one. So this is a final copy according to what I was using. If I jump into here, I can see all of the, <laughs> of course there's nothing in, it's an imported HTML file. I would see all of the revision history. Why can't I find one that works? Let's try this one. I'm losing the crowd, too much dead air. Yeah, here we go. So we see multiple moments when I made some of those changes and then you can click a drop down inside of there. So if a bunch were made in a span, you could jump down to the specific one. And if you click on it, it will show you what the change is. And if we restore to that version, what it actually does is it doesn't rewind back to that point. It takes that point once our revision history pulls back up here. It takes that point and it makes a copy of it at the very top of our document. And so what you'll see is all of that stuff was still there, but it's made that, it's restored that ver version up there. So if your students are working on it, grab a piece of, of what they've changed, copy it, re, you know, restore the version where they last knew they were good, restore it, and then paste the new pieces in there. That's probably, I think, the best way to do it. So I should have looked at the chat, Ahmad, because a while ago you said bingo, and so maybe I got the answer and just missed it. But yeah, cool. So, um, so there we are. Sorry, three minutes over. I thought I was going to be under today, but uh, I'm going to stick around. Hopefully I answered your questions. If I didn't, please stay around. I'll stop streaming. I'll stop recording now. And uh, it can just be us having a quick conversation about anything I missed. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, awesome.